What's going on guys? This is Fusion Outdoors. So today we are looking at the 2023 Sea-Doo Fish Pro Trophy. And there's some mods that I want to get done. And so let's get started. So these are this whole plate, when you come and wash it, do different things underneath here, uh, service or whatever, you've got to take out all these bolts. They're metric size, I'm not sure the size, but I wanted to, well, the first two, the front two are retained. They're all the same size bolt, but they're retained by a washer and a nut and it's really annoying because every time I get it from under here it falls in the engine bay and I've got to locate it so that's pretty annoying so that's the first thing I wanted to tackle was how can I I'll show you a little bit so if you look here there's retainers with nuts inside there so you don't have to deal with a bolt on any of the back it's just these two front so here's my idea this is a rib nut right here, and it's installed by a tool like this. And you would drill out this size hole, this diameter, and insert that. Insert that in there, use the tool, and it crimps the underside and it holds it in place. And then what I did was, I didn't care what size thread this was. What I cared is that the T30, which fits all of these, were the same as this. So this, I couldn't get a rib nut. That was the same thread and pitch size as this one. So instead I got a rib nut that I could get and the T30 fits in this. So all these bolts can be removed by a T30 bit rather than T30 plus whatever this, these two are. So that's the plan. So let's get started with that. So all you do, put it in there like this, and you just press together and it will squeeze it. We got the rib nut installed. I'm not digging it. I mean, I'm digging it because now it's in there and I don't have to worry about the, the nut and the washer falling every time I loosen it. But if you look here, there's a tiny little crack. And I'm going to glue that, and I'm happy with it. But I probably wouldn't suggest you guys do it. Obviously, I mean, I did all this without having this done before, so I don't know the results. I'm doing this for you guys pretty much. So I'm the guinea pig. But anyways, would I do it again? Yes. Because I just it just bugged me that I had to deal with the nut. So let's move on to the toe tap. From what I understand, almost all jet skis have a toe uh, restriction of like five miles an hour because of the way that the cooling water comes into the engine when you're getting towed um, it actually will go in your engine and hurt your engine so if you look online there's plenty of guys out there that are doing this showing how to do it but basically the first step is to find out where your cooling intake line is in my case it's this line back here comes in straight and it connects to this line here there's a sensor here so this used to connect straight to this coupling. So I removed it, and all I'm doing is adding a heater hose, 3 quarter inch ID, 7 8 OD. You can get it at your hardware store. And I'm just rerouting it. So what I did was, the way these work is, this is for go mode, and this is for towing mode. So basically the water's not going in your engine. So I knew I wanted the valve up here because when this platform deck is installed it ends here I can take the seat off and put it into towing mode so all I did was I routed the hoses all around the engine so I can just the goal was to get the shutoff valve there and I'll show you what I used here if yours doesn't have if yours is just straight to the engine you can actually buy a three-quarter inch barb union and cut the hose and then reroute your toe tap kind of hose you can use the one I have is just a gas valve I mean it's just a ball valve it'll do the same it's just to stop water from going in your engine here's a shut off for water three-quarter and then you can pick up these you can either get brass or plastic doesn't matter it's not a lot of pressure so barb three-quarter barb by three-quarter male pipe thread this will screw in here and then just hook, hook on your heater hose and a, and a clamp on both sides and now you have a toe tap so that didn't come with the ski and I just kind of discovered that early on. I only bought this 
end of last year. So I only have about five times out on it. Primarily ocean, a little bit lake. The next is the bilge pump. We were stranded out there because water was coming in. That wouldn't be good, so bilge pump. For some reason, they don't supply it, but they actually have bilge pump fuse. So they have a kit that you can buy, but you gotta install it. So I just did my own. Usually jet skis will run 500 gallon per hour, and there's the part number. But I chose 1100, why not? And then this is just a kit that you can buy on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description. And then you have the hose that comes up here, and it comes out of here. The kit that I bought was fairly cheap, and it came with a plastic, uh, whatever this is called. And I thought, this is a nice brand new jet ski. So I wanted to find a stainless one. This is this was probably 60 bucks on its own. The kit was probably only 100 So, But I wanted this thing to last. I like it. It's nice. I chose to put it here because your passenger usually sits here, and their feet are usually right here. So it would be like right under their butt. All right, and one more mod that you guys will be riding along with is bumpers. I don't know, some guys, they offload them off the dock, tie them up, and park, come back, and they're just roped to the dock, and they're kind of, you know, if there's a drift coming in, it'll bang your CD up, and I don't like that, because it's brand new. So, this is what I bought, and these are great. I'll show you how they're installed. So these, these little hooks right here go under this rail. So what I do is I put them up here, and I clip them in there, and it holds really nice and secure and these are really padded and sometimes the docks are pretty tall so this has actually helped a lot so that's one way of doing it but the problem that i have with is once you are out there in the water and you're going 20 miles an hour or more these actually are doing this or they're like <laughs> coming off basically and then you, know, you decide you want to put them somewhere and there's nowhere to put them. I mean, you could put them in the front, but these are so soaking wet by the time you put them in the front. Kind of want this area to be your driest area. So I just don't like to do that. You can put them in the box, but so what I did instead, I just should have bought these in the beginning, but they were a little expensive and I should have just done it. These are the, the TD ones and there's some mounts that, I mean, they're kind of ugly, but whatever, who cares? There's some mounts that you mount right here or wherever you want really i'll probably mount mine right here and right here and they clip in like that and they really protect your ski you can probably get away with something like that they protect your ski but my my installation is going to be a little different i'm going to primarily probably put them on the the passenger side if this were a vehicle along here but I also want to put them on the driver's side, not for these sake, but just, I'm going to, I bought two extra mounts. I'm going to put two here, two on that side. So in case I need to park it on that side, it won't be a problem. This is actually the knockoff version on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I think they're about half the price as the CD ones. They look exactly the same. It's worth a shot. I think the brackets are exactly the same. Just don't say CD on them. So I'll let you know how they hold up. So what you get is two of these bumpers, two of these brackets, hardware, you don't get this this is a 730 seconds uh, bit and it's a starter bit and when you drill it it should make its threads in there looks to be about right and one thing you want to do so you don't get into the fiberglass is to put some tape right on the drill bit so you don't go too far so just like that so these are the brackets and they go alongside the sea dew you really can put them anywhere because of the bumpers design it's very flexible so but it's actually meant to be if you look here this little skeg or whatever whatever you call this piece this diagonal piece per sea dew it's right above there on this so that's where the back one goes and on the front one it's right here that's the start of that bracket so it's right there so on this one i'm going to put it just a little further in so if you look the start is actually right there of the o and it's only because the foam will deform a little bit if you move it further up here these all drilled out. Now one thing I wanted to point out is one guy on YouTube showed the install of this and he didn't have the right angle and he went downward 
and he actually punched out the bottom and he filled it in with some some sort of sealant and it was probably fine but you want to make sure that when you put this up here and you get your pilot holes this is actually the, the surface of the head you want to maintain that angle as you're drilling and if you're not too sure honestly just take it to one of your dealers and probably for a small fortune they can get it installed for you So the way these work is, this comes in and out, this is fixed, slides into that hole from the top. And then on the back side, clips in, and that's how it looks. This is the clipping motion I'm talking about. Once it's in, it kind of holds it in. That's all there is to it. We got the other side done. Let me show you that. There's one. There's the other. So as you see, we have the anchor on the Explorers and the Fish Pros, but that's actually not a big deal. It's still going to do its job against the dock. Next thing I want to talk about is batteries. Fish Pro, I believe, and the Explorer are pretty much the ones with the Fish Finders stock. They're the only ones with two batteries. One is there, and it's 20 amp hour from the factory. And one is down there. It's really hard to see. And it's also 20 amp hour. And you would think that it'd be enough and quite honestly, it should be enough, but I think these engines are, you know, their power is 170, which is not a lot in terms of the c line, but I think they're high compression, and it just takes quite a bit of juice to actually start them up. If you're running out there, charging the batteries along the run, you stop, you fish, and you want to move to the next spot or the next drift, you turn it off, uh, you try to start it again, and it just doesn't want to start. After a while, you know, your fish finder's on. When we first went out, me and the wife, we had music playing and that didn't help the battery drain. But one thing that I was told and I soon found out the first ride out was the uh, this battery right here is supposed to be auxiliary. And this battery is supposed to be for starting the engine as well as the front screen, etc. But that's not the case. And the way I know that is there's no there's no valve that shuts off, you know, or separates. You know, you charge one battery and they're both charging. The other way to tell is you just tap into this voltage tap into this voltage and it's the exact same so you know that they're connected and it's really just double the amp hour it's not separated like I'm told from CDU or the dealer so that's one thing that I want to change so uh, forget the GC jet ski I believe they're in Australia or New Zealand they do make a kit for a 30 amp hour to go down there but they don't really make a kit for a 30 amp hour to go there that I know of and the kit's really nice. Basically what it is, is that you take that battery out and there's a cradle that sits in the original battery compartment and it fans out with two little wings and it goes up on either side and that would cradle the bigger battery. And it's really tight to get down there, but that's the plan. Here's the battery. This is the part number, it's a 30 amp hour. This is the exact size of that GC jet ski on YouTube or you can go to their website. This is the exact size battery that they're running so that's what i wanted to do and i didn't want to you know i love supporting small business and i'm willing to pay no problem for their design but the only reason i want to make it is because i can make it faster you know coming from az or sorry new zealand or arizona or australia might take a while so i just want to get it done and it's a pretty simple build so i'll bring you along the way on that one the plan is for this one because this one's also going to be 30 amp is it's going to, the back side of this battery has a wall, and that's where the new battery is going to sit up against. They're basically the same height, they're just fatter. So the idea is to take those two fins and bend them straight down so they're the same plane as what that battery is sitting on, and then making a new little box that sits in here and riveting to the back, and then basically mounting the new battery in its place, but it'll have a little cradle that sits in 10 millimeter. So let's quickly take the positive off of this battery here. Underneath the front battery terminals, there was this little brass spacer between two lugs. 
So just, you know, keep an eye on every little part that comes out of there. So here's the factory battery. These aren't bad batteries, they're just for what I want to be able to run on this CD eventually with the freedom of music, which if you blast music all day and turn it on and off, on and off for fishing spots, you're going to kill through that battery so quick. So I want the freedom to just run the speakers as I want, fish finder as I want, turn it on and off, as well as a future fixed VHF marine radio on board. That way I just never have to worry about battery consumption. So let's take this over to the new one. Obviously, it's taller. The new one's taller. The new one's deeper. The width. The new one's actually a little bit smaller. But this is the one that GC Jet Ski runs. So I wanted to do the same in, in case later on in the future I wanted to buy their bracket. Which is really well built. Props to them. They make a lot of great products. Go check them out if you're interested. They make rod holders, cooler racks. All kinds of stuff. Go check them out. So now you can see what we're dealt with, which is this bracket. Give you a little better view of it. So one thing I missed was the bracket held the top of the battery. So that, that is actually going to change because the new battery is taller. So we will have to deal with that. If you notice, there's two, looks like 10 millimeter nuts holding this on and then down here is just pushed in as a capture and I could remove the whole thing and rebuild the whole thing but I want to see if I can modify this and like I said it doesn't matter I can always change it later so let's see what we can come up with this one should be pretty straightforward all right so a little bit of thought on this battery mount So just to give you guys some info, there are people that make mounts that, that go here, that mounts underneath here, and it goes across and it holds the battery right here. And that's actually pretty nice, I like that, because you can still take the lid off. There's also, Sea-Doo offers a mount that goes and bolts underneath the lid. I don't like that because then I feel like you'd have to uh, undo the battery every time you take the lid off. So that's a no. This one's nice, but I want to see if I can make make it work with that mount. So let me get these pieces of aluminum cut out for this one. The other one is basically going to be the width of this. It seems very complicated, but all of these are bends. That is why. So I'll get the aluminum cut out. And then we'll start bending. All right, guys. So I picked up the aluminum, got it all cut from these measurements, and so we're gonna put the layout on the aluminum and start bending it. This is the Harbor Freight bender. I think it's like thirty-five dollars, thirty-inch bending brake. That didn't work. If you look here, this little baby brake, this metal is eighth inch. It's just too thick. I think I finally got it. So if you look here, this is what I was going after. So it's gonna sit like that. And it's going to clamp the battery just like that. And this part actually fits in the... Alright, so if you look in there, it fits right in the original battery box area. Just need to fold down these. It's in. Now the plan is to basically slide the battery in and put a hook or a bolt right here to clamp it shut. It's a new day, and... I struggled with that back mount, the one down there, but if you look, it is done. I'm going to leave it just like this. It's really solid. Like, I can't move it at all. I put, I had an old wetsuit, so I cut up some of the neoprene material, so it actually cushions it. This straps with the original strap, and it's all aluminum, so it's not going to rust, and it's captured on the side by the original tray. Now we're going to tackle the front one, and this is really tight. If you look there, it sits in the original battery tray. Got her in. The next part was to, I wanted to reuse the strap, because I like that. But this strap originally hooked way down there. 
So this is what I came up with. I know it's kind of weird, but this little hole clicks into the original, the factory retainer. There we go. So now it's in. And then the strap will come over and clip on that. And I'm going to line this with wetsuit material underneath here. And we should be good to go. So I got it all installed. Super tight. Battery doesn't even budge. It's in the original location. You know, I know the GC jet ski guys, their, their bracket that fits in there, it fits about the same way. And even when they were uh, describing how to install it, they had a really rough time getting that battery in there. There's just not enough space. So, of course, I did too. But we got it done. So now we'll get all the power hooked up. And one thing I wanted to mention, back to the beginning of the video, when I said when I bought this, the dealer told me that the auxiliary battery was for accessories and the front battery was for starting. I figured out that that wasn't true based on voltage of battery when I came home. And I wanted to explore that a little more once I got all the batteries out. So I wanted to show you guys. So those, this, these two wires are the positive and negative to this battery. And this is a kit you can buy from c -Doo. And if you trace it, it basically goes and it connects just to these terminals, positive, negative, to this battery. So basically all you're doing is increasing the amp hours and that's when I had trouble. So just trying to make, make it so it's safe and I get home safe, I'm not stuck out there 25 miles out in the ocean. So just wanted to keep you guys updated and uh, let me get this wiring done. So the next thing I wanna work on before I wire the batteries up is I've got this little mess here this controls the uh, the bilge pump, and I want to mount it right here, so I can just lift it up, turn it on, turn it off, put it on auto float. And then on the other side, right here, I want to add another switch because I want to add a second bilge pump. And this bilge pump will just be um, controlled on or off. So if the original bilge pump on a float, if it doesn't work, I can just switch this one on, and there's no float in the second one. So we're gonna, because we're wiring the original bilge pump wiring up here, we're gonna add the second one. All right, moving on with more electrical stuff. So I almost have double the amp hours, but what if there's a situation where those go dead? So what I would like to do is, and go online, go on YouTube, you can buy um, a battery jump box and they're pretty pricey, but a lithium battery is going to do just the same. This is a four cell, so it's roughly 16 volts, 15, 16 volts and it jumps no problem. So uh, this is actually like for an emergency. So I'm gonna carry two of these, and if I end up running out of battery to the point where I can't restart my jet ski, I'm gonna be installing one of these uh, female ends. Actually, this is the male end. But you stick the uh, LiPo battery in it, and you can jump start your jet ski. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install it. I want it inside the compartment where it's waterproof. So I'm gonna install it somewhere right around here. And that way I can also use it when I get home, I can uh, put my charger on this connector right here. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone because it's kind of hard when you get home, you gotta take all your seats off and battery charger on the, uh, the leads and this is just much easier. So that's what we're gonna do. We're getting down to the wire on the wiring. This is what I'm gonna settle with for now. It's a push button on off. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, it will work. It's it's long enough to screw down and it'll just be push on, push off. This bilge pump here is an auto float off and auto bilge. And I usually keep it on auto bilge, but it's nice to have an option just to turn it on unless the float takes a crap. So that's why I'm installing a second bilge pump. And that was the plan all, all along. And I want to put it right here. There's a little spot right there. And what I'm going to do is have this second switch on and off. But because I couldn't find a long enough shaft for a three-way, and I found one in a basically a two-way on-off, I'm going to use this for both bilges. And I'll keep this one here on auto, off and on. And this one's just off and on. There'll be one on each side. This will be for the auto. This will be for the secondary on-off. I need to install the second bilge. I use E6000. It's good for marine and very strong when it dries. All right, so I'm having a little difficulty right here because if it were to be mounted here, 
got to make sure that the hose isn't going to interfere with different hoses and drive lines, different things I need to pull out of here. So I'm going to mount it right here, basically right well, beside the other one. And it's still going to work good. This is just a secondary. So I'm going to put it right there. There's a lot of space for the hose to come out and connect to this existing hose on a Y. That'll work a lot better. So all I did was drop in the E6000 that's in a little puddle right there. Just gonna press on it. Just like that. And as you can see, the hose will be positioned in a way I can route it to this existing hose. Got the two switches installed, one here for the one that's on the float, one here for the secondary, all the wiring done and the plumbing. Hooked all the batteries up. So check it out. Got both bilge pumps. They come up here into a Y, comes out here through a check valve, so it only goes one way. Got the battery hooked up, the wiring in a loom. Got this battery hooked up. So this is the, uh, the automatic bilge, which you're not gonna hear unless we fill it. We'll test that later. And then here's your secondary, and you can hear it there. They're all hooked up now. And I converted the end to an XT90 fitting. And that's all that we had to do to get that plugged in. Well, I know that was a lot of stuff we had to do, but pretty happy with the results. And now I feel safe to go out long distances on the water. Uh, tune in for the next video. We'll be going out on the water and testing all these things out and seeing how it goes. Thanks for watching.